Yeti Pee Wee He Bobat. What in the world is this attack? We're going to show you right now on the Clash Tips YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Clash Tips YouTube channel. Super excited to bring you guys this new attack strategy that I've never seen before. I was just hit by this OP clan, and they used this exact same attack on all of my accounts, and it was to great success. It was actually a 15v15 star war, so it came out as a draw. Unfortunately, no, neither side won, but they used this Yeti Pee Wee He Boat Bat attack that was super interesting. So they did it pretty much the same way every single time. Of course, at Town Hall 11, you cannot use Yetis. So instead, the attacker used P.E.K.K.A.s. There were P.E.K.K.A.s in the Town Hall 12 and Town Hall 13 attack, but this attack was super interesting to me. Started out with E-Drags, again, not the most effective way of funneling, but funneling is the key with this attack style. Notice that that gold mine and that cannon were still not getting that funnel to where it needed to be. So put that P.E.K.K.A. in, started the other two P.E.K.K.A.s, with a few healers on the other side, everything's going to collapse into the middle. And then once that collapse is made, once that funnel is absolutely OP, mind blowing, then he's gonna bring everything straight up the middle. It's gonna be the Pekkas, it's gonna be the bowlers, it's gonna be the witches, the healers are gonna come in behind all of that, the heroes are gonna come in behind all of that, and then you're gonna have a log launcher, you're gonna have that rage spell, it's gonna be with all of that under the Grand Warden Tome, everything just solely destroying everything. I know that I'm a little excited about it, but this attack absolutely amazed me. The reason that this worked was because you have so much damage in such a clustered area. You have the P.E.K.K.A.s that are being targeted because they're out in front. You have the bowlers that are in behind. You have the skellies that are coming in behind that with the witches. And then once all of the central defenses are taken out, then you just do a bat sweep that comes around the backside. At this point in this attack, all of the splash defenses are gone. Everything is completely destroyed. He, he totally could have swagged that free spell. He probably could have swagged his bat spells, to be honest with, with you. But absolutely OP attack. I, I saw it the first time and I was like, holy cow, this is an amazing attack. And this is probably something that I'm going to try in a future attack as well. Now, that was our Town Hall 11 attack. I want to show you the Town Hall 12 attack here. And again, starts out with funneling. So on this one, he's going to start out with the Warden. The reason you wouldn't funnel with the Warden at Town Hall 11 is because the Warden does not quite pack as much of a punch at Town Hall 11 as he does at Town Hall 12 and Town Hall 13. He's going to funnel out at this bottom side with an E-Drag. Again, not the best way to funnel. I would probably choose to use a baby dragon, maybe something else that I could use to funnel, depending on the base, because one black mine that had been in that corner, if he had put down a Coco Loon, he might have been able to detect that, but one black mine would have completely taken out that E drag, and his funnel would not have been set, and this attack might not have been successful. But this is how the attacker did it. He knew that I probably wasn't going to have a random Sam there in the corner, and so he went ahead and used an E drag. That Grand Warden is pretty much done funneling at the top. So here comes the P.E.K.K.A. The P.E.K.K.A. is going to start to make sure that everything goes straight up the middle. And then he dumps everything in. Here comes the Yetis. Here comes the Witches. In come the Bowlers down behind that. The Heroes down behind that with the Warden. He's going to rage right on top, right before we get to that Eagle. And then everything's just going to plow straight up the middle. He's going to use the Warden Tome. He's going to time it so that it, it's timed with the grand not with the grand warden with the eagle shots with the eagle hits he is going after the town hall of course there are those two multis that are right there in the middle he wants all of the splash down and as soon as that splash comes down he's going to start the bat wave right there on that archer tower that's right around eight o'clock he's going to start that bat wave it's going to come all around the bat side so that this pekka bow yeti bat style it's gonna go into the core take out everything in the core and then once the core is taken out the bats are gonna sweep around the backside super effective strategy i've never seen it before i've seen pekka bobat before but this was an interesting twist on pekka bobat something that maybe you want to use again something that i'm probably going to use this was an op attack he probably could have swagged 
his bats instead. Still, was able to three-star me, was able to get everything down. Super nice attack. This next one's going to be Town Hall 13. A little bit different because, again, the higher up you go, the more splash damage you have. You have scatter shots that enter the picture. You have three multi-inferno towers, which I know you have three multi-inferno inferno towers and turno towers. You have three multi-inferno towers at Town Hall 12 as well. But again, funnels on the on that bottom side with his Grand Warden. Funnels on the top side, he's going to use a giant, which has a little more hit points per troop space, and then he's going to put in a couple yetis down behind it. The whole goal of that side is to make sure that that corner is funneled so that when he brings in those bowlers, when he brings in the rest of his yetis, whenever he brings in his P.E.K.K.A., whenever he brings in his witches and his healers and his heroes, all of that is going to go straight up the middle, completely and obliterating everything that's there in the core. Now, he does have those two scatter shots with high damage, so I want you to watch how he decides to protect against this. And again, he does these this attack the exact same way every time, and I love that. Whenever you're doing attacks, you want that muscle memory. You want to be able to say, I'm looking at this base. I know how I'm going to hit it. This is a setup that can go with this attack style. So again, here comes the mass army. He, he's bringing in his yetis. He's bringing in his bowlers. He's bringing in his witches. Interestingly enough, he did not use a log launcher, which I might have chosen to use. Instead, he goes with a wall wrecker. And to me, the reason for using a wall wrecker in this attack is because the town hall is all the way on the other side. And I don't know if you remember, but Supercell gave that wall wrecker a big buff a few months ago so that that wall wrecker can likely make it all the way across the base. To get through those scatter shots, make sure that he rages and uses the warden tome. Make sure that you use the Warden Tome to go through that center of the base. If you do Super Bowler attacks at Town Hall 14, this is a very similar attack style. Brings in that RC up at the top, and the only splash damage that's left after that multi-target Inferno Tower goes down is that multi-target Inferno Tower and the Wizard Tower on the bottom side. Brings in the bats, and they're just going to sweep through the bottom side. Again, this attack is the exact same whether you're at Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12, Town Hall 13. He has multiple freezes in order to freeze that Inferno Tower, lock down that Wizard Tower. He even wastes a freeze here, which he didn't need. He probably could have swagged it. Completely obliterates the base. So I love this attack. Yeti, Pekka, Hiwi, Bobat, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely amazing attack. If this video was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome Yeti Pee Wee Hoppy Bo Hoppy Bobat videos. We'll see you next video.